Welcome back to Talkville, the number one Smallville rewatch podcast. <laughs> you know what this podcast is. We don't have to explain it to you. This is Ryan Teas over here. Ryan. Hi, how are you? You have an eye infection? Let's not worry about it. All right. Tom, good to see you. Good morning. I'm glad we're doing this. I needed this. Good morning. It's a rough start. It's a rough start, but we're here and uh, we're excited. We've, we've got a, a lovely patron, top tier patron on who's going to talk to us and we we you know it's a great idea Bryce and I thought about it and it's it's working and uh, I think people are really enjoying the forum and uh on Patreon and uh there's so many cool factors you get your name read off at the every ep- on every episode you, you there's sometimes we do a zoom sometimes it's just all these perks and now patrons come on the show go to patreon.com/talkville Become a patron, support the podcast. We need you. We couldn't do it without you. We wouldn't be here. And if you want us to do more uh, seasons, if you want old uh, one-eyed Ryan over here and Tom, then, hey, you need to support this show. You know, for the finale of this season, we're going to uh, we're gonna watch it, Tom and I, and you'll get our reactions, our genuine reactions, and Ryan will watch it. Maybe Ryan will have a video of him watching it. Or the Maybe. three of us. I was on it last time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll watch it again, All right. and I'll remember that it's happening this time. Are we asking him or telling him to be there? <laughs> we're, t- we're, we're demanding. <laughs> we're demanding. Uh, and look, if you go to my Instagram, at the Michael Rosenbaum, go to my link tree, you'll see events that Tom and I are going to be going at, cons and whatnot, cameos. We're doing a Smallville con, our first ever in New Jersey in October, and much, much more. And uh, TalkvillePodcast.com for all great merch and inside of you online store for a bunch of you know, Lexmas scripts signed and a bunch of other Smallville stuff. So check that out. And also, I never really mentioned it, but if you want to support my podcast inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum, I really appreciate it. I know a lot of you guys do. A lot of the same patrons. Tom's been on like four times and we've had some great guests and I think you'd really enjoy it. So give it a shot if you have time. And uh, yeah. And, you know, en- enough about us. Let's talk <laughs> Let's do it. Without further ado, let's get into season four, episode 19. This one's called Blank. Blank. Aired April 27, 2005. It's almost been, uh, I guess, 19 years to the day. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, it's it's close within about 10 days. I just turned 17. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to hear you. Okay. You know the best part about this episode? The best part of waking up, Tom. The best part about this episode is it's called Blank, which reminds me of one of my favorite movies for anyone out there called Gross Point Blank. Do you yes, guys remember that movie? I love that movie. I don't remember. And so I got to watch that again now. Yeah, it's great. It's terrific. Director Gino Swartz, who we love, third episode of the season. Writers Brian P- uh, Peterson and Kelly Sauters, who we love, fourth episode of the season. Guest star Jonathan Bennett as Kevin Grady, Tom Butler as Lawrence Grady, Camille Mitchell as Sheriff Nancy Adams, Heather Dorkskin. As Erica Poss, Ryan King as Dylan Grady. Camille uh, Mitchell said she'll come on. The sheriff said she'll come on the podcast. So oh my gosh, why don't that's I great. Um, schedule that for our, our second to last episode or finale? Have a nice guest there. Uh, synopsis. When Smallville gets hit with a hand-blasting amnesia assailant, Clark's friends help him regain his memories, his powers, and his anonymity. So uh, we have a lot in store for you today, Ryan. We start another episode in the hottest spot in Smallville, the Talon. As Lois pays barista, Kevin Grady stares from a distance. He decides to walk behind the counter and steal cash from the register in front of everybody. He gets away with it after hand blasting Lois and causing some sort of men in black amnesia memory loss. Crazy. Uh, Kevin Grady, uh, just off of Mean Girls, he was Aaron Samuels. That means something to me. It does not mean anything to you. Nothing to me. Me, never, Michael's giving me the blankest stare. Never seen it. Yeah. All right. Um, similar to last <laughs> season's episode, Magnetic, the <laughs> talent robber tries to get away in a yellow vehicle. I don't know why they always do that. Wait, wait, wait. Did anybody else? What did you What did you think when you saw that yellow truck? <laughs> Just, uh, I, 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 I had remembered. Yeah, what? Yellow. Yellow. I just remember seeing it. I'm laying there with my wife watching it, and I just started laughing. She goes, what are you laughing at? There's nothing. Why are you laughing at that? And I'm like, Michael's going to hate this yellow truck. He's got a whole thing about yellow trucks. It's like a thing. Anybody who gets a yellow or an orange car <laughs> or a truck, get out of my life. 
How do you feel about the well, song? Especially though? if it's like a rich person's car, like a $300,000 orange or yellow Lamborghini. It's like you are on top of douche mountain. And, you know, it's just like, I, I, I don't, I mean, what are, what is that? What you want to be so recognized. You already have a Lamborghini, but now you want it to be yellow or orange. So the world knows because you're so insecure about something. Well, it's also like you have the money for a Lamborghini. You also, they, you, you can choose the color at that point, I would imagine. Or maybe that's just what they had left. Maybe that's what they had left. Blue. I really hope that in some version of Smallville, Lex has like a yellow Lamborghini in a scene that we don't know about I'm yet. I'm sure he does. The- I, I bet there was one time and I'm like, are you got to be kidding me? Uh, this time they're stopped by Clark. He attempts to stop Kevin, but in turn gets hand blasted as well. Mm. We see a sequence of all of Clark's memories disappearing until he has lost all sense. Everybody of was hand blasting. Those hands were fast as lightning. I tell you what, I think that that flashback was kind of cool. Like there were a couple of things that did really catch my eye. I thought they did a good job with that. And I couldn't imagine how long it went. <laughs> like there's so much information in that. Yeah, I was already like out of the episode at this point. You know, I, I was just like, oh boy, another guy with powers. But it gets better because I like the idea of, you know, what happens to Clark and um, and Chloe. And Chloe. So that was kind of cool. Instead of making a stop at Smallville Medical, Chloe brings Clark back to the Kent farm, hoping it will jog his memory. It seems Clark has forgotten that he has powers because when he tries to enter his home, he ends up ripping the door from its frame. Luckily, Chloe is already aware of his super abilities and helps play it off when Lois comes home. So before, Chloe knew, but Clark didn't know she knew. Now Chloe knows, but Clark doesn't know he knows that she could know, you know. This season, there's been a lot of Clark not acting like himself. Episode one, kal transference as Lionel, unsafe under Red K, and now this episode. So it's it's a lot. Upstairs in the town, we see Lana arriving home to Jason, who's been staring at the door, waiting for her to come home. He shares an acceptance package to Central Kansas. However, Lana doesn't celebrate. She tells him she might not be going to college at all. Why? Because of secrets secrets instead of taking the news graciously jason steps out of any character development we've seen thus far by grabbing lana's arm and forcefully telling her how much he has done to protect her i thought this was just out of line this was like what dude this was already i'm watching this episode with my wife already i've had to explain three different things this being one why what does chloe know what does she not know why is this guy being so mean to Lana? Like, there, I already had to explain so much. So this was a bad episode for people who don't know the show at well, all. He's so, let alone the been so do. gentle and understanding and forgiving and all these things and stepping up. And we've seen this side of him. And all of a sudden, something just makes him snap. And now he's bad guy. He's bad Jason. And there was just no character development. There should have been a scene. There should have been a scene where we see why this happens. Otherwise, it's like, this makes no sense. I love, I love, actually, I don't love, I love that I don't love this. He goes, you have no idea how much I've been doing to protect you. And then he leaves. <laughs> Most people would start listing off all the things they've done. Yeah. <laughs> it just books it out. I think all you needed to do is not grab her arm. It's it's also interesting that Jeno directed this. It's kind of interesting that, this I think they told her they directed. they directed him to have Jason or J- Jensen grab her arm. I think that was something that, that had to be done. And they talked about it in um, uh, pre-production and all that. Because we have our meetings. Do you think he was wearing a black kryptonite ring? I almost felt like this was a, like a doppelganger for, for his character. Yeah, I thought it didn't something feel... was up. I didn't know yeah. what was going on. I was like, well, this guy must have got a, he must have like been cast as a new character in a new show. And he's got to get off <laughs> show no i think you're right though i think it was like a directing yeah. choice because yeah. why why all the why why uh back on the farm chloe acts as clark's tour guide to relearning his powers she goes on to tell him about his extraterrestrial origins his experience saving smallville and how nobody else knows his secret they leave the barn and head back to the town to look for clues for what happened during this clark rediscovers his x-ray vision which causes chloe to cover up oh, it's sorry. amazing how he learns his Dude. x-ray vision 
He learns it yeah. at that exact moment that he sees something, that there's something there. That was such BS, folks. Like, what in the what? It's also like, I wonder who did this. Oh, he left his driver's license under the cookies. <laughs> it was so like. Come it wasn't on. even a driver's license. It was like a car. It was a it was a pass know, for a motocross but... thing, and we didn't even say any motocross. That was I was bummed about that. That was just terrible. We that we was must terrible have spent, in Spanish. We must have spent five days. Th- so much of this happens at the Kent farm. And one of the other things that I remember what laughing about with my wife watching this is if Lex shows up at the at the Kent farm. That means that you had to leave Vancouver at three o'clock in the morning to get there to get ready. So I know you're not happy (laughs) to go out. No, definitely not. That was an hour and 20 minute drive easily. Oh, from uh, where you live to the Kent farm. It was not easy to get to. And And then two hours of makeup. The roads were terrible. And I had one eye open. I was one eyed Willie driving with my head out the window, trying to smack myself to stay awake. Yeah, it was uh, it was. uh, Clark begins to wonder why he hid his secrets for so long, thinking that he should have spent less time worrying about other people. Chloe tries to encourage him not to make any more mistakes or confessions until he sees his parents, but they get distracted when he rediscovers the girl next door as Lana walks downstairs and he prematurely combusts into a lamp. Now, here's what I say. And it's funny how Chloe is slowly learning about Clark's pervy powers in this x-ray vision scene and heat vision eye And just allows it to happen. She's like, I don't want to say anything. If I were Chloe... At this moment, since he's willing to sort of tell all, I would just say, all right, I know these things. You can trust me. I haven't said anything. And he does trust her. So I would think, like, say, tell me everything. Where are you from? Are you from another planet? Are you Learn all these things. That's what I would want to learn. If someone, you know, all of a sudden one day, looks at me and then goes, watch this. And then they move a glass from across the room. I go, whoa. All right. And then they were, what else can you do? What, what other things are you, I are would, you talking about, are you talking about Friday night at magic castle? Boy, I do love my <laughs> magic castle. Clark heads back home in the loft, gets frustrated when he can't understand his chicken scratch. Kawachi notes. Lois interrupts to offer some words of encouragement to trust his gut. The next day at school, Clark embarks on his next mission, trying to score with Lana Lang in hopes that she will. She also has amnesia for all the stuff he's put her through in the last four seasons. Nice, Bryce. During this scene, Clark comes to the realization that he and Lana didn't work out to his own disappointment because of his actions. This was pretty awesome. Listen, this again, I have to share this. And, and my wife said this, which is she was cracking me up watching this episode when Clark's talking to Lana and he's like, Hey, uh, you know, we kind of have this, maybe she just kept saying, are we going to make out? Are we not going to make out? Are we going to make out? We're not gonna- <laughs> I All know. She said, every time somebody talked, it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, Lois and Chloe pop in to let Clark know they've tracked down Kevin Grady in Granville. We cut to a scene and see Kevin inside his childhood home preparing to go, go, a go bag. He gets interrupted by his father, who's confused why his son left Summerhold Institute and his treatment protocol. He explains that Summerhold only made him more of a freak. And to help his father understand more, he hand blasts his memory away. It's very confusing. I thought the father, you know, was a good actor. He did a good job. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember the actor, like, when we went to the door and he answers the door. I remember thinking, this guy's, this guy's nailing it. Like, he's really, I care for him. Yeah. Like, he's doing a good job. Yeah, he did a good job. Shortly after, the gang comes knocking on Grady's door. They discover that Kevin is a patient at Summerholt. And the reason why because there was some accident where his other son, Dylan, was killed in a Dick Cheney-like hunting accident <laughs> involving both boys. <laughs> Their Clark. convo ends. Clark rediscovers two new powers, his super hearing and super speed, all in this episode. He hears Kevin getting away on a motorbike. Chloe tells him to run after him, but unable to control his speed, Clark passes him and ends up on a random farm. That was a cool yeah. shot, though, him well, passing the motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, that was a cool shot. 23 minutes in, we get a Lex sighting. Thank God. Air horns. Clark and Chloe visit Luther Mansion, and Clark can't believe he's besties with a billionaire. They ask Lex for his contacts at Summerhold to help uncover what's been going on. Lex alludes to them having advancements. Nothing. In the the realm. (laughs) He alludes to them nothing. (laughs) Of memories and amnesia. (laughs) After last season in Memoria, uh, going through experiments to uncover his lost memories. Lex asked Chloe to beat it. (laughs) To beat it. 
For some alone time with Clark, she cautiously obliges, and the guys head into the Gawachi Caves to help jog his memory. Clark starts talking about his drawings matching up to the caves, begins to spill the beans about a trap door to the Fortress of Solitude. Lex attempts to take advantage of Clark by getting access to the drawings. Two things. One, I thought it was cool when Chloe whispers to Clark, be careful. I thought that was cool. I thought that was well executed. Yes. And I was like, okay, that's cool. That could be used again. And the other thing about the map, and we've had a lot of maps on this show, but I love how there was on the map, there was literally written out door with an arrow. <laughs> Couldn't have been more, more obvious. Instead of waiting for Lex's connections, Chloe decides to break into Summerhold herself, something Clark wasn't able to do in previous seasons. <laughs> <laughs> she stumbles upon a list of patient CDs and luckily finds Kevin Grady's. After transferring the data to her email, she gets apprehended by a worker. Back at Smallville High, Lois shares video footage of Kevin's experiments with Clark. They learn that Kevin isn't being treated for his powers, but instead is being brainwashed into believing that he was the cane to his brother's Abel. Clark that, leaves Bible. to go meet Kevin in the same woods where his brother was killed. Not only does Kevin learn that his short-term amnesia power has long-term effects on Clark Y, but he also discovers that his father was the one pulled who pulled the trigger on his son. Much like Kevin, I don't get any of the motivation here. Like, uh, why would why would why would the father blame his son? It's so sad. It's so sad to blame children for anything. Like why? And, and he he deliberately shot him, right? And why? Yeah, but also like, why was his green collar up underneath the motorcycle jacket? <laughs> why did he shoot his son? These are the questions. Do we know why? No, it's not clear, and it's sad. It's just sad. I don't hey, know I'm going to kill knows. my son for no reason, and then I'm going to blame my other son, who's going to be tormented the rest of his life for no reason. There's no motivation. Now I'm really unliking, disliking this episode. I, I was into it like, you know, I like seeing Clark kind of forget things. But then when I realized what kind of a crappy story around this is, it's just like they threw all believability out the window. Everything. Like, I think, like the I audience think Ryan, is stupid. When our patron comes I on think, here, I'm if they sit here and tell me how great this episode is, I'm going to ask them to leave patron. <laughs> Because this can't be a great episode. This doesn't make any sense. I want to use this guy's powers and hit you right now so you don't have to remember any of this. Please, hand blast me. I want to be hand My blasted. <laughs> God. I'm sorry. I'm Got sitting it. on the show, but like, how could you not? You can't step on a piece of shit and go, ah, no big deal. I'm not going to wipe that shit off my shoe. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good analogy, but I said it. Determined to regain his memories, Clark heads to Summerholt. Already there, we see Lois lighting up a receptionist to try and find her cousin. Inside Summerholt, we see Chloe strapped to How a I... table similar to the video footage of Kevin's brainwashing experiment and overseeing the procedures, is... Dr. Grady. How is Lois at Summerholt? How did she get there? How does she know Who that knows? Chloe went there? She... It's, just un... it's just not. A She's thing, a right? journalist and she has sources. That's kind of our thing. Ironically, okay. Dr. Grady shares his belief that wiping difficult memories would reduce the trauma that someone has to live with. However, he hasn't decided to wipe his own memory of killing his son. Yeah, why wouldn't he just do that? Kevin barges into the room to momentarily stop the experiment as Clark struggles to walk past a tray of kryptonite liquid. Once he makes his way into the experiment room, and it's too late. Chloe begins to get zapped. Clark throws his whole body in front of the memory rays. They are blasting Chloe. Doing so somehow shoots all of Clark's lost memories back into him. The experiment goes haywire. Pieces of equipment begin to fall towards Clark. Clark uses super strength to stop them. However, the sheriff and Lois walk in to witness it all. If only there was someone nearby who could temporarily wipe their memories. Kevin comes to and realizes what's happened. He hand blasts the ladies in the room and helps Clark's secret remain a secret. It, it just, it, 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 nothing made sense. Nothing. I think it, it's like, it's like they wrote it backwards. And I don't mean like they, they're like, this is what we need to happen. We need everybody to kind of know Clark's secret. He doesn't. And then they backed into the whole story. Check this out. I'm going to pitch it. I'm going to pitch the story. All right. So there's this guy we start out. He's got this meteor power or something. And he can hand blast like his hand. So this thing comes out and and it, it makes you forget what you just did. So he could steal and people just forget their memory. And then Clark sees him and tries to stop him. And he does a really long hand blast. And then Clark's memory completely goes away. He doesn't remember anything. He doesn't remember his powers. Okay. Okay. That's 
kind of cool. And then we realized that this kid was in this place, this institution, because he's they're trying to wipe his memory out so he doesn't remember and suffer the tragic killing, inadvertent, inadvertent killing of his brother. And then we find out his father did it for no reason, and he's putting his son through torture to uh, erase his memory for no reason. Cover his tracks. And then Clark gets his memories back, and, and and the way he gets it back is miraculous. Everything is just perfectly set up. It's just like it, it, there, there could have been a million stories. I bet right now, if I just start making stuff up right now, I could make up a better story. But he loses his memory. By the way, we memory. just have our synopsis of the whole, well, se- the whole show. What, what's weird about it is that um, normally when uh, powers come up against Clark, He's less affected by it yeah. and everyone else is more affected by it. But this was the opposite where everyone he's like, cause he was confused about why, like, oh my God, you lost all your memory. Normally when I do it, like people forget like the last two minutes. And how about so this? for, how for about whatever lo- reason, it was just the opposite. Yeah. How about he loses his cart, loses his memory. Fine. And then Chloe tracks down this guy and we find out that he actually did accidentally kill his brother. And so his father helped him to go to the summer hall to forget the memories of that so he could live a normal life. But he's, but he, um, trying to do these things, his brain, when they were using these machines, they were using kryptonite and it caused this power, him to get this power. And so now he has this ability or something, you know what I mean? I mean, we could go somewhere with that, but uh, uh, farts. The episode concludes with summer Holt being turned over by the Smallville Sheriff's Department Clark meets up with Kevin in the hall, and we learn that everything that happened during his amnesia state has been forgotten. Back on the farm, Clark finds Lex, who is seemingly stopping by to pay a visit. Mm -hmm. He asks Lex what he wanted to talk about during his visit the other day, but Lex lies about their trip to the caves. You know, you could could almost make an argument that at the end of Onyx, I, I remember saying I wasn't sure... Maybe which Lex was still there. Yeah, maybe or part who was, of that bad person was. Maybe there still is. Maybe there just was, and we just didn't it seems that. like seems like that. Lex has the mansion. We see that he's stolen Clark's chicken scratch cave drawings. That night, Lana shows up to meet with Clark. He's confused on whether or not he arranged a date with her, but regardless, he doesn't want to let her leave again. She's seemingly seemingly receptive to give him a tenth chance. The next day, Clark meets with Chloe in the torch to thank her for the last couple of days. He tries to beat around the bush to learn whether or not she discovered his powers, but she doesn't bite. Talkville is brought to you by AG1. What would we do without AG1? Stop and listen. If you're taking tons of supplements, pills every day, and you're tired of it, Well, AG1 is here for you. AG1 is just a glass of water and you put some powder and mix it. And AG1 has everything you need for the day. Hey guys, it's just one scoop mixed with water once a day, every day. And it helps make me feel energized, focused, nourished, strong, and ready to take on the day. I just went on a golf trip with some buddies of mine and I took this every day. And three of those guys are like, what is that? And they took it. And they were like, this is amazing. You know, Tom, that's because each serving of AG1 helps deliver our daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful habit that's also powerfully simple. Prebiotics and probiotics. I heard about this stuff forever. And I was like, no, I'm fine. Changing. Life changing. When you start to take things that are helping you digest, feel better. I used to get anxious because I I didn't know when I was going to go to the bathroom, not to be crass, but like AG1 has these in them, pre and probiotics. It's pretty fantastic. They have adaptogens, antioxidants, whole food source nutrients. I know if I drink this daily, I'm going to feel that extra boost, energy, focus, all that stuff. And that's why they've been a sponsor for so long. If you haven't tried AG1, I urge you to take a shot at it. It's really so simple. And you know, we're talking, Tom, we talk about building habits, new habits, because a lot of us have bad habits. I know I do. But if I could wake up every morning, make my bed, brush my teeth, take the dogs out, take my AG1, I feel fulfilled. Like, hey, I'm ready to start my day. So incorporate this in your life. You just feel more like vitalized. That's 
That's why I take it. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why, again, they've partnered with us for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash talkville. That's drinkag1.com slash talkville. Check it out. Well, I think we should talk to a patron. Are they here yet, Bryce? How are we doing? Zach, well, we're losing our shit a little bit because we've been talking about this episode blank and we're all fired. We're all fired up on this side. So you're walking into a, a shit storm right now. Zach, first of all, why did you start watching Smallville and what is it about Smallville that you love? Oh, yeah, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, I, I started watching Smallville the first season that came out, actually. Um it was a big deal for me. I grew up on comic books. So Superman was always my favorite growing up. And so when the show came out, I was very intrigued, very excited. Uh, but I had no idea what it was going to be about. So that was uh, that was a little bit of a tough pill to swallow as I got started into it. You're, you're starting with Clark in his freshman year. Uh, he's not Superman. There's no Lois Lane. Uh, and Lex is actually his best friend. Uh, which is a severe departure from the from the comics. Were you so, worried about it? Were you thinking, oh, this isn't going to be good? I was initially, and and keep in mind, at the time I was eleven years old when it came out. So, oh my, God. for me, oh. thinking from that aspect, um, for me, it was just odd. And I and my first thought was, this isn't Superman. But I was still very intrigued, and I wanted to continue watching. And as I continued watching through that first season every single week. I found that I really liked the relationship between Lex and Clark. Uh, it was it was a refreshing take. Um, and as I've grown older and continued to rewatch the show, I've I've fallen in love with that aspect of the show more and more. And in fact, as you get into later seasons and you start to see the relationship crumble, it was actually devastating for me. So it, it's funny coming in. I hated the idea of it, and by the time I got into it, I, I hated seeing it go away. Man, you know, we're we're on this episode blank. Did you watch blank? I did. Without saying anything, what are your thoughts on blank? I think overall as an episode, it's not fantastic. However, I think it's a pivotal episode for where you're going in terms of the the whole series. I think it's very important. Why? Yeah, it's got it's got to do with the the Lex and the Chloe aspect. I mean, obviously this is the first time we see Lex really be severely underhanded with Clark. He really takes advantage of the situation with the amnesia mm. and he goes about his business trying to discover the secrets of Clark and goes as far as to go and steal things out of the loft from Clark. Uh, all while continuing to pretend, hey, I'm here because I heard you have your memory back. It, when in the reality is he's there solely to steal the pictures and then find out if Clark remembers their discussion that they had in the mansion. You know, if I think about it, it was it seemed a little out of place, like, you know, that Lex would do something like this. And Tom made a reference a minute ago to to the episode Onyx where I split in half and one part of me is really bad and then the good me. And maybe that there's a little bit of that bad Lex that lingered after that accident. And this has caused him to do things he normally wouldn't do. Well, I, I think in, in and this is just my opinion, I think that's always been there for Lex. I think he's fought his nature uh, throughout throughout the first several seasons. He's he's tried to fight his nature, what his he grew up on, what his dad taught him, um, and it's just starting to come out more and more because he's becoming more and more obsessed about discovering the secrets of Clark, discovering the secrets of these of these caves. Why did Kevin Grady's father kill <laughs> his son? See that. And rewatching the episode again, I I There's still no reason. can't put that together. <laughs> There's no reason. I want to I want to say it was an why, accident. Why would he torture his son? Saying his his son did Poor it. Zach, I feel like we don't mean to put you on like the stand here. <laughs> we just but Rosenbaum has gone on a couple tangents about what's what's bad about this episode and what well, doesn't make sense. So I think I think maybe when you when you break it down. And, and this goes to some serious extremes, but there, there's a lot of people out there and I, and I can, I can relate to this where you didn't necessarily have the, 
appropriate relationship with your parents Mm -hmm. that you should have growing up. And you get into situations where your parents don't act like the adult. They don't act like the responsible individual and it's easier for them to pass the buck. Now, do I think going as far as shooting your son and blaming your other son and and going as far as to change his memories to make him think he did it? That's awfully extreme. Um, But again, it's a TV show. I got to tell you, I was I was okay with what I thought was happening before, where accidentally the gun went yeah, off. Yeah, he should have just said it was, his, it was his fault, his accident. That's I the feel story. Like we could have gone with that. Yeah. What's the twist? Yeah. But that his father did it for no reason. Well, and that's how it appears when you watch when you watch the flashback. It appears as if the father turned, raised his his gun, and shot his brother. It doesn't look like he tripped the way that no he rem- Kevin remembered it. The next episode, have you seen that one yet? Of course. I, I have watched it recently. I haven't watched it in the last couple of days. What can we look forward to? <laughs> There's not a lot to look forward to in the next episode, <laughs> from my opinion. I, I, I feel like this is an attempt to draw back in the, the Clark Lana discussion. We, we departed from it for the most part in this episode in blank. And now we're trying to draw the audience back into it. And it's it's not particularly uh, it's it's not a fond episode in my memory. It's this is what it's called. I'm going to teach you something right now. It's called a studio network note. <laughs> it's when the studio and network say we want Clark and Lana. That's what people want to see. Make it happen. That's what we want, and they do it. Well, the crazy part is I don't think that there are people that don't want to see that, but we want to see something new. We want to see something different and it's kind of repetitive when we get into that relationship. It's, oh, things are going to be different. Let's do this. And then comes down to Clark's got to lie about something. How, and yeah. that turns How can it be different? And- How can it be different if you're not going to tell her your secret? How? It's just, a, it's the same thing. It's, it's called crazy. It's like doing the same thing, thinking there's going to be a different outcome. I got a question for Zach. Yeah. So uh, I like the point you were talking about how this kind of like highlights like Lex uh, turning more sinister. On the flip side, you kind of see Chloe get to show that she's not taking advantage of Clark in this instance. Like, uh, what are your opinions on her character development? Yeah, that's actually what I like most about this episode. And I think it's its biggest redeeming quality is that we finally are seeing a transition in the way that the character of Chloe has been treated throughout the series. She goes from the third wheel, third wheel between Clark and Lana to just being downright bitter about the whole situation, knowing that Clark does not have that kind of interest in her. And she goes as far as to work with Lionel to investigate Clark. Now she turns back on that later, but now we've had Pete's departure. Clark needs a Clark needs a sidekick and Chloe finds out the secret when Alicia shows her and she's done all of the right things up to this point, but it's kind of been in the background. She's made a few comments here and there, like at the beginning of the episode about him going to Miami for, for college and what that will do to the farm. Um, but it's never really been addressed the way this episode addresses it. And in this sense, Clark doesn't have his memory and she takes it upon herself to protect him from everybody else, protect his secret, even from himself when he wants to tell everybody. And then on the backside, she continues to go about business as normal. She doesn't tell Clark that she knows because she has finally come to the realization that he will tell her when he's ready. And she's accepted that and she's okay with it. And I mean, even at the forefront when she's discussing with him, you know, he thought it was, he must trust her a lot if he shared the secret with her. And she is very honest with him. And there's no bitterness about it when she says it. She says, you didn't. I just, she just knew. And so I think it's a huge character moment. Plus one point, Chloe, minus one point, Lex, this episode for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, you're very insightful. We appreciate you. Thanks for being a patron and supporting the show. Yeah, thanks. See you, buddy. Yeah, thanks. My assistant Jessica is in here asking me if I need a pot gummy to chill from this episode. <laughs> thanks. I know. Well, geez. So, you know, well, you know, I just say it just how wait it is. Just wait until next episode. Hi- highlights and oh. lowlights. Are there highlights? Interesting that the keeper of Clark's secrets and anonymity wasn't his parents in this episode. Lex is going full heel now. Does Chloe still know about his powers because she was blasted? 
I don't know. Look, interesting things of no. Interesting. Jonathan Bennett also note. worked with Welling on Cheaper by the Dozen 2. Jonathan Bennett also played Bo Duke in the 2007 DVD prequel, The Dukes of Hazard: The Beginning. Oh. Weird. When Kevin Grady erases Clark's entire memory, glimpses from all the previous episodes of the show appear on the screen, including Clark's journey to Earth and his last moment on Krypton. Previously, Summerhold Institute was located in Metropolis. However, this episode has Sheriff Adams and the Smallville Sheriff Department handle the arrest of Dr. Grady. Um, and now it's, it's time a satellite office for the hotline. Talk Let's go to the hotline. We're going to start with patron privileges. All right, here we go. Let's get into it. Here's Michael P. Hey, everyone. It's Michael P. from Texas. At the climax in the episode blank, you see Clark catch these two very large pillars in the Summerhole Institute saving Chloe. Tom, can you tell us a little bit more about the behind the scenes on this one? I'd love to hear more. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really remember having done it, but I, I thought it was a cool thing. It was there's this one low shot of Clark's reaction, of the struggle of it. I thought it, I thought we pulled it off. Yeah, I but was- yeah, I don't I don't. Yeah, I think it looked good. Here's uh, Brian. Hey, this is Brian from Smallville Nights in Boston and Rhode Island with a question about the season four episode blank. I've always liked this episode because I think even with Clark having his amnesia, all of the characters really show you who they really are. Lois acts like Lois Lane. Chloe acts like Chloe. Clark acts like Clark. Lex shows us who he is. I know that Tom always talks about how he often thinks about, is this an episode of Smallville that will show a new viewer who these characters are? I was wondering if you had thought about this episode that way. No. I wouldn't show a new person this episode. Well, he asked Tom. So well, I answered for him. Tom? I agree. It's confusing. And it's a you can't just leave somebody in a room and watch this episode and think they're going to understand what the show is, what the series is about. And I don't think you. it's fair to say that Lex shows his true colors because Lex has been pretty good. It's like this is the new thing where he shows his dark, darker side in a way. So I felt He's like, a rainbow of colors. I guess. Uh Joshua. Hi, uh, this is Joshua Hernandez calling from Florida. I feel like this episode, we really got an opportunity to see Chloe's true character in not only taking care of Clark, but also taking care of the secret, as well as balancing that with helping him and helping other people. I'm wondering what are your thoughts of uh, Chloe's character development starting from season one all the way to season four? I feel like she's really started to come into her own. Yeah. What do you think, Tom? What do you, you know, let's ask Ryan. Um, Ryan, what do you think about Chloe's character development to this point? I haven't thought about it much, honestly. I mean, obviously she's not just uh, the sidekick anymore. Now she knows there's there's a step up. There's some, there's some real um, drama here and some suspense. And, you know, it's like we know that Chloe knows. And I don't know where this is going to end up. But it's interesting. It's interesting. I think she has, her character is more interesting now than it had been. I mean, she's been pretty consistent, like for the entire show's run. Like she's always been uh, spunky and curious, and she sort of knows, and she's very intuitive. Aside from you know Clark's thing, but that was different. I'm I'm glad she's not sort of like, yeah, like not love lorn anymore. Yes, that was a little bit because uh, I think I think that's truer to her. Yeah. Well. Hi, this is Kendra calling from Brooklyn, New York. This question is for Tom. How is it playing your character who was discovering his powers for the second time this season? The first being in Transference when you were playing Lionel discovering Clark's powers and were both experiences different? Thanks. Yeah, was that was that hard, Tom, to like pretend you have no idea how to use these things and trying to sell it? I, I think what I did is I leaned into simply the, the confusion and wanting to understand more about what's happening. You got to... You got to let a lot of things go in this episode in order to believe that Clark would actually act this way. Um, so I, I just remember being like, there's an old saying, it always looks better. It always looks better on a guy when he's not knowing. And it's an old sort of Hollywood movie, black and white thing where if the character knows what's going to happen, then that's boring. You got to always kind of be like, what's going to happen next? Yeah. And, you know, I so I just had to follow the lead. And it's too bad that. Clark's parents were so hard to get a hold of in Metropolis, but <laughs> yeah. Americo Vespucci. Hey, patron Americo Garcia from Edinburgh, Texas. Uh, in the opening scene, uh, Rosie, the, the uh, bad guy, gets into, that's right, a big yellow truck. And uh, <laughs> that's another thing, too, um, uh, a yellow truck. Could you pick the color that uh, would be most uh, more noticeable than that? Anyway, thanks, guys. Goodbye. 
You're right. We talked about it. Marigo, thank you. I hated the yellow. Um, yeah, two on the nose, too. Talkville is brought to you by Better Help. We talk about this all the time. The stigma is going away. It's important for us all to talk about our feelings about our life with someone we can talk to, someone who's objective, who's a professional. Um, so many people have done this. I've been doing this for a long time. It helps. Ryan here, uh, well, you can't see him, but he uses better help. So many of my friends do, and it's just it works for so many people. And we all carry around different stressors, big and small. And at times we keep carrying them around rather than processing them and letting them go. When we keep them bottled up, it can start to affect us negatively. Therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and to figure out how to work through whatever's weighing you down. Therapy from BetterHelp is helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. I know a lot of people think that. It's not for just those people. It's for all of us. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Talkville today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Talkville. Hello, my name is Erin Andrew from Pittsburgh, PA. Chloe steps into the role of protector when Clark has amnesia. It was so nice to see the side of her rather than just a third member of a love triangle. Do you think Clark will ever trust Chloe enough to tell her the truth? Thanks, guys. I, I liked it because, you know, it makes Chloe look less of like a sort of a, 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 I have to figure this out and this, and I don't care. I'm prying in everybody's business. And this now, now you see like a good side of her where she's like really being comforting and um, present for her friend. I thought that was cool. Hey guys, this is Shane from Michigan. I have a quick comment about the episode Blink. I believe uh, Chloe's line, premature combustion, that's one I didn't need to know about, would be perfect for one of your guys' Talkville shirt. Uh, with a little graphic on there, it'd be beautiful. All right, thanks guys. I, Bryce, you'll have to look into that. Premature combustion as a shirt. Uh, that's, you know, all right, let's see if there's That's a good one. name for a prog rock band. On tour with the hand blasters. Hey, this is John from Seattle, Washington. One of my favorite episodes. Uh, despite him redis rediscovering his powers, uh, Clark's powers are treated a lot more casually this episode. Uh, like they just kind of happen instead of him always turning his ear and focusing intently. Uh, why do you think it took the show this long to just show his powers without making him super dramatic? Uh, why didn't they keep doing it after this point, do you think? Thanks. Bye. I think you just need to see him. People like you can't just assume like if somebody's watching it for the first time or, you know, I think it's important to show those powers and people like seeing them. It's still Clark. It's still, you know, you know, that whole idea of, you know, these things that he could do. And you want to see him if you if you weren't, I think the show would look cheaper if you didn't show that kind of stuff. G'day, guys. Michael here from Bendigo, Australia. For all of you. If you had the opportunity to, would you choose to completely forget a memory? Or do you believe more that even the worst experiences should be remembered for how they influence you? Thanks. That's a tough one. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would. Um, I don't know. I mean, if someone says you can choose to forget this memory, I'm sure there's memories that I would choose to forget. Completely. Yes, there are. And I don't think it would make a big difference. I mean, it, well, it is just, I wish they weren't memories. So yeah, I, I'd forget them. I think it would help me probably if I didn't have some of these memories. Tom, is there a memory of yours that you'd just like to forget? For sure. We're I not mean, talking about your ex-wife. Come on. No. <laughs> there's so many things that I would just be like, there's so many things I remember that make, that are of no use. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Why can't I remember more good stuff? Yeah. Or more more things that actually can propel. But I, I guess you have to find a way to learn and grow from things. You know, that's that's all you can strive to do. Ryan, the same. I feel the same. All right. Yeah. So, Sophie L. I don't know if you noticed, but during the scene where Clark's starts running and ends up surrounded by cows in this field, we can hear John Williams' Superman theme. Not sure why they used it here though. Huh. Yeah. 
That's kind of cool. I didn't I didn't know that. Rosenbaum and rating now, system. Rosenbaum well, rating. this is the time, <laughs> folks. Here we are, 50 minutes into this episode. Uh, we'll start out with Ryan. What's your gut? Um, <sighs> heater. Really? Mm -hmm. A heater. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tom? I'm going to say one. I thought it was... One! Everybody tried... Everybody tried really hard, but I just don't think it was. I don't know. I think yeah. whatever, whatever Zach did a good job of spinning it. Yeah, he did. It made me improve yeah. my score a little bit for sure. One bomb. Uh, death and save count. And one save dead. Count. Dr. Grady kills his son. Uh, one save. Clark saves Chloe from getting squished by equipment. 19 episodes, 15 dead, 38 saved. Series 107 dead, 141 saved. Ryan's, Ryan's favorite scene. Favorite oh, this was hard. Favorite yeah, Ryan did it right before because he couldn't choose. All right, scene one. Uh, Clark saving everybody and getting his powers back. Wait, scene one? Yeah. He gets his powers back in scene one? No, that's my first scene. No. Because all my nothing before that really struck oh, me. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> number one on his list. Oh. Yeah, number one on the list. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Go ahead. Read. Uh, scene two, Lex and Clark talking about what has transpired. And scene three, uh, Clark and Chloe at the end. Ah, I mean, not even, you didn't even choose like pulling off the, the screen door or any of that. I mean, I don't know. It. I'm going to go with uh, choice number three. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Three, Clark and Chloe. That was a tough one. Y yeah, man, it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Wow. It was, got away with that one. Like that was tough. It was it was tough to find a scene in this one because there was no um, good scenes. Like I think with the action one, I was sort of like it was more. I was happy that Clark had his powers back. Um, but then at the end, I don't know. It, I think that probably that summed up the episode for me. It sort mm. of wrapped it up, and I don't know. That's it for this episode. Stick around next week as we turn back the clock and talk about season four, episode twenty, Ageless. We're getting down to the wire. Uh, you know, there's got to be a good one here. Uh, I'm hoping that the the next three are are are, are good. This to me wasn't good. Uh, let's take the discussion online. Let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at Talkville Podcast, Talkville Pod. Become a patron. You could maybe be a guest on the show like we have. Uh, also get your name shouted out and much more. We appreciate all your help. patreoncom slash Talkville. More information on the show uh, is all in the description and the hotline number and all that. Get your calls in, your messages in, and um, we uh, we really appreciate it. This was fun, even though we I didn't really like this episode. I uh, I still had fun talking about it and how much I didn't like it. So remember, folks, always hold on to small bills. All right, now's the uh, the best time of the show where we yell out to our top tier patrons who support this podcast and keep it going. patreoncom slash Talkville if you want to join. We really appreciate all your help. It keeps us going. Nikki G, Leanne P, Raj C, Santiago M, Little Lisa, Thomas Leafblower, Shane W, Sophie M, Betsy D, Abby P, Ray H, Hadada, Karen Apple M, 99 More, Lalani N, Brett G, Always Hold On to Smallville, Estevan G, Garrett W, Bob K, Kimberly L, Tom N, Jason W, Osama A, Glenn to P, Lana Rhymes with Banana W, Nancy D, Brian G, Sarah W, YVR Grips. Anna M, Amanda R, Brandy S, Teddy one two seven, not one two six, but one two seven. Michael P, love you. Ryan R, Jordan M, uh, not M Jordan, because that's another guy. Randy B, Craig G, Jor L, my dad, Heather and Greg, love those guys. Uh, I made Talkville say buds. Brian H, Eric K, Kristen B, Darth Achilles, Finky early, is on time. Miss. Charles Clark Kent. Kent? Charles. 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 Charles? I can't read. Damn, who's that? Jeanette E., Deadvid, General Zod, Jem and J., Dugar, Carlos C., Jem and J. just put me in a mood. Uh, Tommy Z. Boston, 68, Ken the Limerick Guy, Corey L., Mr. Home Arcade, Jesse C., Claire M., D. Brown, Karen Ira M., Jules M., L. Don Supremo, and Leslie V. McBurt's Ginger Moose. Please remember Janice from North Carolina. How can we forget? Because I say it. Chris, Christoph S., Michelle M., Drew, Amanda Lynn, Jessica B., Michael Kang doesn't blank. Sebastian F., Wolfie. Hey, Wolfie. 
Dak Flando, Stephen the Grocery Checker, Matthew and Lincoln, B, Briar, Charlene, A, the Coopers, Mary and Louise, L, C, G, O, Cindy C, Shannon, Fofan, and Tina E, Matt, Rick, Jen T, Randy S, Cassie B, Brat A, Felicia R, Danny Mo, Mirabel, J S, Mary K, Stephen Nate, Danger, When You're Rich, You Aren't Crazy, You're Eccentric, Rosenbaum Fan, Sammy Sharman, Carrie Ann, Patrick R, The Alexander Castle, Daryl E, Spicy Chicken, Jenny B, Anna B, Monica T, Jeffrey K, Pip Kenobi, Katya C, previously on Smallville, Matt C, D Pro Sajal, and Devin Chadwick and Keith B. Well done. I'm glad I didn't have to say the Pip Kenobi. Just saying. Uh, major paradox, Kuki K. The patron saint of Smallville, Libertariat, sounds like a horse in the race of the Kentucky Derby, uh, Biagio C, Kal-El 38, Felicia B, Lady J, Mignone? A? Mignone? Mignon? Mignon? Like- Ming- mignon? Like a filet mignon? Min- filet mignon A? The Salty Ham, Murphy C, David L, Madison H, Mc- Mika. Mikai? Mika. Mika. Mika J. Guys, I'm really good at this. Tori H. Paul the Grim G. Guitar God 021, JDT, and Kalona. We love you guys. Thanks for supporting the podcast. Join patreon.com slash talkville. And uh, thanks for all the help. And and we're going to do season five. So thank you and keep supporting the podcast. And we'll try to keep it going. Thanks, Tommy. Good seeing you, buddy. Good to see you, bud.